New details hint at a very interesting approach for Assassin's Creed codename Red. So want to discuss that. This will also be the first next-gen only AC. And we now learned what type of enhancements we can expect when the game is probably coming out. And way, way more. If you are excited for this Assassin's Creed game in Japan, then leaving a like would really show your support. And let's go. But first, the sponsor of this video, Naraka Blade Point, which has a free weekend going on right now. And a crossover event with Wolong Fallen Dynasty, where you can earn brand new cosmetics inspired by the Team Ninja title. If you're not familiar, Naraka is a combat focused game where you have to master a unique combination of melee weapons and combine them with your hero's skills in order to be successful. And there's a ton of depth, also thanks to the counter system, where the key is to predict the opponent's attack and use it against them. There's also a ton of support for this game. They're adding new weapons, new weapon skins, really cool looking outfits, and also brand new characters like Akos who can transform into a beast. Maps are dynamic with many different arenas, there are traps that you have to look out for or can use to your advantage. Doing this and using all the movement options can really help you out on your road to victory. Again, there's a free weekend going on right now so you can easily try the game, it's also on Xbox Game Pass. So no excuses, check out Naraka Blade Point and the special Wolong crossover event, find a special link in the video description, this would really support the channel as well, so thanks for that and now let's get back into it. Let's start with with a quick refresh of your memory, Assassin's Creed Red is led by Ubisoft Quebec, who before this worked on Immortals Phoenix Rising and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Swamp Mirage will be a smaller, more intimate game like the older titles. Red is going to follow in the footsteps of Origins, Valhalla and Odyssey, so be a massive open world with hundreds of hours of content. I expect a random loot system again, so that you can continuously find gear and weapons that can improve your character instead of only getting them in dedicated chest making the activities more rewarding as well and i think the dialogue choices will play a bigger role compared to valhalla so more like odyssey that main quest but also side missions can go in multiple directions based on your choices i already liked seeing the improvements first the base game in the lost tales of greece missions we saw after odyssey's release and it evolved even more in the fate of atlantis dlc with even bigger choices especially in the final episodes of that content ubisoft notes that they want to take all all the learnings they had from Odyssey and Valhalla to epitomize the best of what we can do at Ubisoft in terms of RPGs. So they basically want to make the best Ubisoft RPG they can by applying what they learned from Odyssey and Valhalla. Although it seems that Quebec is also looking a lot at their first big mainline as a screed they made, Syndicate. We now learned thanks to a new article from Tom Henderson that the character we saw in the teaser trailer is the game's female samurai. While there's also a different character, a shinobi who is understood to be an African refugee who learned the way of the Creed. So instead of choosing a male or female character at the start, like we did in Odyssey or Valhalla, it seems that in Red there will be two playable characters with different playstyles. Which sounds quite a lot like Syndicate, only they now switched it up making the female character as a samurai more focused on melee combat, while the male as a shinobi should excel in stealth. We also have French YouTuber Jonathan noting that picking one character or the other in red should lead to different scenarios and that both are very different instead of being copies like we saw in Odyssey and Valhalla. So again, way more like Syndicate, although probably taken to the next level. Now we have to remember that this is not confirmed by Ubisoft, but it does seem like a logical next step, which would completely change the game. My imagination is already running wild as this likely means that we get two separate skill trees that are hopefully way more different from each other than what we saw in Syndicate. Does two characters mean that we have to find loot for them separately and that we have to craft two loadouts instead of focus on one. Maybe certain weapons are exclusive to one of the main characters and cannot be used by the other and having different personalities and dialogue depending on who you play as in each mission could mean way more replayability where Alexios and Cassandra of course said the exact same thing. One other detail we learned is that seemingly Quebec has decided to take a Splinter Cell-esque or Hitman approach to the title with things like hiding bodies hiding in tall grass, extinguishing lights so your shadows are not spotted, etc. 
all being current features. Like the article notes that there will be a big focus on stealth, even though they list things that are mostly not new. Like some of them were present, but especially in the newer games, there was never a good reason to use them. So if that changes in red, that could be interesting. Although we of course heard them say before that the game would have a stealth focus. So let's see how it plays out. My take is that it will probably be like Odyssey, that stealth is just one of the play styles you can choose. Like Ubisoft has Mirage now as their more old school stealth game. So red can be for a broader audience. And I'm sure they improved the stealth things in red, which was also really needed because sneaking around in Valhalla was really bad. But still, if you don't have the patience, I'm sure you can go in with a sharp blade and start slashing people. Ubisoft also discussed some things themselves. So one of them is in regards to the graphical side of things, because this is of course the first is a screen title that skips the PS4 and Xbox One generation, so will be current gen or next gen only. One of the big things we are pushing is to have a more dynamic world, a world that evolves around you, and we want everything that you have on yourself to evolve as you walk through this environment to show the wear and tear and to improve the fidelity of the experiences that we are building pushing our animation systems further to make the game feel more realistic than ever. Which sounds really promising and kind of reminds me of one of the focus points for Breakpoint. Stick with me, of course the game did not turn out great, but it did make the environments harder to navigate and when crouching through the mud it would reflect on your gear as well. Would be really cool to see a more advanced version of this in red. Overall they want everything to be embedded into the environment and that the environment becomes more difficult to navigate for the players and for the AIs. This could only make for more varied outposts that instead of always having a flat ground you now got some holes or mud that will slow you down. Just some speculation but I think it's an interesting way to use the new technology. So you can just imagine it being a very next generation approach to RPGs at least from a graphical fidelity point of view. And this by the way according to Mark Alexi Cote basically the boss of the franchise now and he also discussed plans for something that I always like with these types of games the post launch. Red will be supported for many years with expansions, with growth, with a bunch of things that I will not reveal. Okay, that sounds interesting. Maybe they will bring back the story creator mode from Odyssey or improve that. Like, I still think it had a ton of potential if it was focused more on creating combat encounters instead of story quests. But yeah, we could totally expect a wiggly shop again. Although, fingers crossed that it's someone else than Red. Like, I've seen his face enough these last couple of years. I also expect way more wiggly things to happen. Similar, but also more than what we saw in Odyssey where of course next to the mercenary or ship we could hunt down for sometimes unique rewards. We could also expect a new quest or sometimes even a new mythical creature to fight as part of the reset every week. Odyssey was also way faster with introducing new systems to the game like the loadouts that dropped two months after release instead of a year and a half as we saw in Valhalla. Transmog was also added one month after Odyssey's release and for Quebec's next game Immortals it was already there at the start. So in that regard I'm really excited that Quebec is having handling the post-launch content for Red this time around. But things will also be different in Red. Ubisoft notes that if you look at a game like Valhalla, most of its expansions were kind of around the game. And what I think they mean by that is that you could already access Wrath of the Druids and Siege of Paris after completing one story arc in England, which is like five to six hours into the main quest. And this meant that these DLCs could not advance the narrative of the main game or introduce more challenging elements because players who just started out in Valhalla had to be able to enjoy this content as well, making these expansions like way less impactful overall. So what they're doing for Red is thinking about how to grow this experience, this world, more like an MMO. Think of it as a single player MMO rather than what we've done in the past. And MMOs like World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy XIV always have expansions that increase the level cap, advance the story in major ways, add really big new features and also provide more challenges challenging content. So it seems like Red is going down this path as well 
while of course still being single player only. Both Red and Hexay, by the way, are the biggest investments Ubisoft has made on single player games ever, which is kind of crazy to hear. They also take more time for their games now, with Codename Red starting in January 2021, immediately after they shipped Immortals, looking at the LinkedIn from Carl here, who is a lead producer on the game. They only had three years for Odyssey as that started after Syndicate, so that would mean that they got an extra year now to build this Feudal Japan game, as it's planned for the end of 2024, while the other, of course, big mainline SS Creed title, Hexay, is planned for the end of 2026. And what's interesting is that Mark notes that these games can live concurrently. It's because they will approach game design, they will approach a structure very differently, with Hexay, of course, not being an RPG. But yeah, I think he basically confirms now that we're looking at at least a three year long post launch plan for Red, as it will still get content even after Hexay is out, which is kinda wild. The final question is, when can we expect to see like a proper look, the first trailer for Red? I'm leaning towards Spring 2024 myself, unless they plan another SS Creed Showcase this year, which I do not rule out because they got a ton of other things planned as well. This E3 though in mid-June will focus on Mirage and the VR game. Having read there as well would of course take away from those titles, so I don't think they will do that. And it also makes sense to launch these first before they really shift the focus to this Japan RPG. I at least can't wait and we'll keep you posted here, so totally subscribe for everything SS Creed if you haven't already. A like on the video would really help me out. And check out Naraka Blade Point via the link in the pinned comments. And by the way, four extra AC games were leaked recently. If you haven't checked it out yet, you can watch the video by clicking on the screen. I will speak to you soon. Goodbye.